there is no perfect time to start. Take the leap and embrace change. You know, change is ongoing and it's sometimes uncomfortable. And knowing that it will take you time to get there. Find a mentor or a trusted advisor, someone who's already done the process. So you can also learn from their experiences as well and apply it to your life. Hey family, I'm Shoshana and you're doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Through. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Trishana, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Thank you for having me, Lakita. <laughs> I'm so excited to sit down and I'm so excited to sit down and talk with you today. But before we jump on in, um, I like to start off every conversation with just talking about how I come to know the guest that I am having a conversation with in this episode is no different. And so you guys, uh, here on the podcast, I have talked about this amazing online uh, Facebook group. <laughs> I've talked about it several different episodes. I've had several different people from this particular group here on the podcast. So when I tell you this group is the bomb, obviously it's, it's the bomb because I'm studying having my people here on the podcast. And um, Trishana is in this group as well. So we are a part of, of this group. We came in at the, on the same cycle. Are you cycles in? Yes, we are. <laughs> we, came in, <laughs> we even came into the group on the same cycle. So that should, so, so that should tell you guys something. Um, but we came in on, on, the, on the same cycle. And so we've been part of this amazing group, just really like supporting each other. And we follow each other across social media. So we always talk to each other on social media. And um, Trishana filled out the guest form to be on the podcast. And I'm just like, girl... Yes. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even read it. Like, uh, of course. <laughs> of course you could be on, on the podcast. So I'm I'm super excited. Um, uh, super excited that you're here, Trishana. So thank you once again. <laughs> yeah, thanks again. You're like a big sister to me. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. So um so yeah, so Trishana, we have a we have a few things we have a few things in in common. So I'm I'm super excited to get into this conversation. So we could you know so we could talk about those things and talk about it from uh from a different perspective, you know from our two different pers- per- perspectives. And those who listen to the podcast and have followed me you know on social media, you guys know that you know I attended law school. I got accepted into Third Grand Marshall School of Law. And after a year, decided not to go back to law school because I was just like, okay, uh, I don't really want to do this anymore. And kind of sort of went through a little bit of an identity crisis. So um, that's my story. And um, after deciding not to go back to law school, I ended up embracing my purpose, which is something that I always knew what it was, which, you know, it includes me sharing my story of surviving sexual abuse. And you guys know that I fought that for a long time because I'm like, ugh, I do not want to spend the rest of my life talking about the darkest part of my life. But, you know, eventually I embraced my purpose. And so now I'm here doing this podcast, have my consulting, you know, company, just helping, you know, women and making connections all around the world. And so I'm super excited about that. And um, Trishana, you did something pretty similar to that. You did something pretty similar. Uh, For me, it was a legal field, but for you, it was the medical field. Tell us about that. How did you, or why did you um, go from leaving the medical field to, you know, empowering women? How did you, how did you make that transition? I have a Jamaican native mother who placed a lot of emphasis on education. Mm. 
And I was raised to believe that certain professions were more respected and give more fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And as a child, I yearned for acceptance and validation. I thought the medical career would give me some sort of approval and permission from others to have a more meaningful life. I assume that after I studied my undergraduate degree in medical technology mm -hmm. that I was going to go medical school after but things didn't go exactly as planned my life pivoted to criminal justice I faced a lot of job rejections which caused me to go in great depression anxiety you know and I had a fixed mindset that you know I was going to get a higher promotion in my criminal justice career, but something didn't seem right. And I was just searching for contentment and happiness. And after years of searching, I discovered that I really wanted to use my passion to empower you know, women in their purpose. And interestingly, my first boss gave me a life coaching book, which I hid away because I assumed that I was going to pursue this medical career regardless. And then I realized that this was a sign and the redirection and career myself was leading me to where I intended to be, which is now a life coach. Wow. So, oh my goodness, just in the little bit that you just said, I'm pretty sure so many you know, men and women, not just women, men and women can relate to what you just said. You know, you have a Jamaican mother who uh, put education on this pedestal and you thought that your happiness and contentment, you know, will come from the medical field. Again, like I said, you know, we have that in common because for me, it was becoming, an, you know, an attorney to become the next Perry Mason. Like that was my definition of success. Growing up in the projects, you know I'm, I'm the oldest you've seen a lot been through a lot you know we grew up we didn't have role models positive role models growing up so I figured you know let me be the example of success that my siblings need to see and so I put this pressure on me to get this legal degree because I had something to prove, you know, growing up in the projects, you know, um, the media, all I saw was that I was doomed to be a failure because I was raised in the projects. My mama was on welfare and she had a house full of kids. So I was doomed to fail. So I had something to, to prove. And so like you, I put all my eggs into that legal basket OK, thinking that it was going to bring me happiness and not to say that that I was um, unhappy pursuing the career because I wasn't, you know, it was working. I was in law school. That was the reason why I came down here to, you know, to Houston, Texas. So when, you know, when I heard that voice say that this is it, that's like your your role ends here. Well, like when I didn't go back, I was confused because I had no other plans, no other aspirations, you know, because I knew I was going to become, I was going to become an attorney. And for all intents and purposes, it was happening. I was in law school. <laughs> like, so, um, so yes, yeah, so it was a big transition um, for me. But you know what? I, I thought that my mom was going to be upset with me for not going back to law school. And that was so far from the truth. Was your mom upset with you when you decided not to pursue? Um, Not really. Okay. Not really. No. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. So let's talk about self-limiting beliefs because normally most times they materialize, you know, at a young age, right? We have these self-limiting, these self-limiting beliefs. And then, you know, when they materialize, we start to, you know, act them out. We start to live in those uh, um, limiting beliefs and then they start to infect us. They infect our mm -hmm. thoughts, they infect our actions, you know, they infect how we see ourselves and how we show up in the world so because we have been living a certain way for so long 
we may not know that we're living according to a limiting belief. So for someone who is in that situation, right? People are saying, oh, you know, you have self-limiting beliefs or whatever. Tell us like, how can we recognize a self-limiting belief? And then how can we eradicate it once we recognize, recognize it? Okay. This might sound crazy, but befriend them. Because oftentimes we so focus on ignoring them and hopefully they disappear. But just aware of them, spend some time on this third and write them down and dispute those thoughts and replace them with positive affirmations. Because as you said before, you know, our beliefs are instilled by our parents and we assume that we believed that they have the best for us. And we haven't really challenged those beliefs to understand where they're from. Is this helpful? Is this logical? Is this healthy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And no, that does not sound crazy at all because um, we, because another, because pretty much when you say befriending them, it's just pretty much face, face the limiting you know, face a limiting belief, but I guess the, the, you know, one of the ways that we can really like understand that it's limiting us is when we have this belief system that's, you know, stopping us from making a move, right? It's, you know, when you have thoughts and after having these thoughts, you feel worse than what you did before having the thoughts, you know, you have these thoughts and you're not seeing any type of progression, right? That's a sign that you're having a self-limiting, you know, thought that's stemming from a self-limiting belief. And, you know, most times it, it happens, you know, because of unresolved trauma. These beliefs are birthed from an unresolved trauma that we haven't, you know, faced, right? And we don't want to face it because who wants to keep going back to uh, a circumstance or a situation or face a person that has caused us harm and hurt in some way? way shape form or fashion so y'all know y'all know my story so I get it I get why you don't want to you know face your traumas but you have to because when they go unresolved you know they turn into these beliefs that's going to ultimately turn into you know these self-limiting thoughts that's going to stop you from having a life that was designed you know specifically specifically for you so I want to just like encourage everybody to do, you know, to, to get the help that they get the help that they need. So, you know, Tashana, like me, you are a first generation college graduate, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something else that we, that we have in common. Um, do you think being a first generation college graduate or the first person in your family to reach success, do you think that has impacted your self-esteem in any way or cause any additional stress or pressure to be perfect? Um, yes, to an extent, because my mother was a foreign immigrant who came to a strange country for a better opportunity. And there were a lot of expectations to do well in school and to be like the savior, someone to be a role model, someone could look up to and also take care of the family. And it became overwhelming at one point and even exhausting to live up to these expectations. I found myself in comparison zone where I felt like I was behind and I became envious and jealous of other persons who were ahead of me. And I literally became my worst enemy. I was hard on myself to meet these goals and when they didn't fall through, you know, I fell more into depression and it negatively affected my self-esteem. I never felt that I was good enough. Then I realized that validation comes from the inside. Otherwise you will spend your entire life keep chasing it from people, jobs and things, which will leave a void. 
And once I define my own definition of success, and that my success is living in my purpose each and every day, and it's okay to be different from others. Mm, I love that. That's uh, I love that. That's 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 good. I can relate to that on man. I can relate to that on so many different levels. But how did you make that mindset shift? How did you go from the the mindset of you know I have all these pressures to be the savior to, I need to just validate myself. You know, I was tired. (laughs) I was tired. And then I spent a lot of time just contemplating and seeking support. You know, no man is an island. Because oftentimes when we do introspective, it, it can be a very horrible experience, especially when you look in the mirror and you're not happy with what you see. And I guess that's with any addiction, you know, cause people to refuse to get help because of the idea of that they might be judged or still stuck in the rot. So for me, it was just seeking support. And once I saw the help, then I was able to, you know, adjust my mindset and move forward. Man, that, that was powerful right there because that, that introspection, man, it gets us every single time, you know, Um, which is why I think, you know, a lot of my clients hesitate before coming to work with me because I'm a self-awareness coach, right? So self-awareness, a part of that is that introspection, introspection, right? Looking at yourself, you know, from the inside out. And there's so many things that we just don't want to face, you know, because we just, scared to face them. And like you say, we're scared that people are going to, are people going to, to judge us, you know, but, and and all that is true. But the thing is, is that people are going to judge you regardless, you know, they're going to have something to say when you think that you're doing everything right. They're going to have something to say when you are messing everything up, you know, um, one of the life coaches that I love to follow is Lisa Nichols. Um, she's like my inspiration. When I first started my business, I, you know, found her and I just like latched on to her because she shares her story of going from, you know, welfare to wall street. You know, if y'all don't know who Lisa Nichols is, I'm going to need you to Google Lisa Nichols and you, you know, should, I followed her too. <laughs> yeah. Love me some Lisa Nichols. But um, she said something that her grandmother told her and it sticks with me to this day. She says her grandmother was like, you know, it's, it's our job. People are going to talk, talk about you and have something to say. So why not give them something to say? So mm-hmm. what her grandmother, grandmother was trying to say is just be you. Whatever it is that you are purpose to do, do that thing. Like give people mm-hmm. something to say, you know, because if you are so worried about uh, what other people are going to say about you, then you might as well just do what the hell you want to do anyway, because they're going to talk about you whether you do or you don't. People are going to always have something to say. So why not give them something to say? And do what it is that you purpose to do and live your life according to how you want to live your life, you know? I agree. So, so yeah. But um, I can definitely, you know, relate to that a lot too, because for me, it was imposter syndrome. Because, you know, first generation, college graduate, first generation to have any type of level of success. Man, I went through imposter syndrome because when I would go home, um, like on holidays for like Thanksgiving, holiday from college or whatever, it was always this big deal, you know, and which is cool, you know, because you want people to have a big deal when you go home because, you know, they haven't seen you in a while. But I just felt like I needed to be something that I wasn't right. Like I needed to look like this epitome of success that people thought that I was and during a time you know I had just started my healing journey from the sexual abuse so on the inside I was a wreck on the inside because I am going through this healing process you know because all of these thoughts and feelings and revelations was coming out you know as I was going through therapy and stuff like that and I found myself pretending or putting this mask on every time I went home, because even after everything was said and done, 
nobody was talking to me about what happened. Nobody was asking me, you know, hey, you know, how how's it going? How are you doing, you know, at school, you know, and things like that. Like nobody delved deep. And because nobody asked about it, I figured nobody wanted to talk about it. And when you, you know, live in silence for so long, um, it's hard to just like put it out there and just like bring it up. So I hid it. I hid it the best way I could. You know, I would go and buy new clothes every time it was time for me to go home <laughs> because I didn't want to look how I felt on the inside on the outside because I needed to be this pillar of strength. I needed to be this example of success, not really understanding and realizing that people will find strength, you know, in my healing process. I didn't know that then but I know that now. So, so yeah. Do you have any revelations that you didn't know back then, but you know now based off of your story? And that you don't need any validation from others to pursue what you're called to be. Because for me, as I mentioned before, I spent my entire life like seeking this validation because it's like I needed this permission to start my dream career and to know that everything that you want is already inside of you. So sometimes when we go out there searching, you know, as that green light to go ahead, just know that you are enough just the way you are and persons are waiting for you to serve and use your gifts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So what transformation did you experience to get to a place where, you view your, your job rejections, you view poverty and sexual abuse as preparation for the work that you're doing right now. I learned one of the greatest thing is to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Recognize that it's not my fault for the sexual abuse and poverty or hardship I endured during my childhood. And give myself grace, give myself time to heal. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be on anyone's timeline. You know, sometimes we always ask, why, do, why can't you get over it? You know, it's been a long time ago, but it's okay to go your own timeline and be you. You know, for so long, you know, I, as you said, we all, well, I'm guilty of it. We're that mask where I go and I put on this mask for everyone to see and I I was afraid to share my potential because in school I was told that I, I was either too shy or I talk enough. And so I was always mindful of my behavior, even at the workplace, because I didn't want to offend anyone. And now I realize it's okay for me to be me, talk my own truth in my own way and also seek support, reach out, find your community and set boundaries you know I've learned to walk away from any pursuits or things that make me feel any less value than what God called me to be and support myself around people like you and others who can uplift me and pour into me because as women you know we are natural givers and caretakers so we always give in but we also need to replenish ourselves as well because we're going to be just empty and depleted on the inside. And commit to the process. It's not easy. It is work. <laughs> and knowing that you'll have the highs and the lows, the rain and the sunshine, but you will need both the rain and the sunshine to go and thrive. But yeah. Mm, I love that. You're going to need the rain and the sunshine to thrive. I love that. I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, I'm so glad that you said that because when we go through anybody, whether you male or, or female, it's like when we go through trauma, like we also put our own selves under pressure to hurry up and heal and get past it. You know, I did that at the, you know, at the beginning of, of, of my healing journey, you know, I will put pressure on myself like, oh, Keisha, can you just get past it already? But I had to realize, you know, I was, you know, in that situation for eight years, 
eight years. Do you know how much trauma happens? How much damage somebody can do in an eight year time frame? So why would I think that, you know, I will be over it in eight weeks or eight days? Like, why would I, why would I think that? So once I remove that pressure off of myself, you know, I would not allow anyone else to put that pressure on me to hurry up and and heal from it, you know, because it's a, you know, it was a delicate situation, you know, so I needed to go through the process, however long that takes, because what I did not know then, but I realized now is that, you know, I went through all of that to help the women that I've helped up to this point. Like, you know, because I there has been plenty of times I have walked off stage and women have come up to me after an event and, you know, and has said, you know, thank you so much for, for sharing. Like, if I could just have a piece of your confidence, like, how do you even get that, you know, get that confidence? I could never stand on stage and say what it is that, you know, that you said and share what you shared. And that's okay. Because not everybody is meant to do that, you know? Obviously, it was meant for me to get up on that stage and show you whatever it is that you needed to see to get the help that you need, right? So I, I did not let people, you know, tell me that I needed to hurry up and get past it, right? Because there was things that I needed to, to learn. There was things that I needed to go through. There were um, other wounds that needed to heal, so I can, you know, be a blessing and example to, to other women. So I said all that to say that, you know, you have no idea what it is that you're supposed to learn on your journey. Trust the journey, trust the process, like Trishana said, trust the process, go through the process because you don't know what you've been refined for, right? We just, we just don't know at all. So Trishana, with this whole pandemic situation, has it caused you to regret your decision to leave the medical field and start your coaching business? Or do you feel like <laughs> you should have <laughs> stayed in the medical field? <laughs> no, but I believe if things had worked out, I wouldn't be happy. I usually thought a medical career would give like security and fulfillment, but I honestly would be unhappy and miserable being on this journey, as I said before, I am so passionate about this and social change. And especially now during the pandemic, we learn the value of time and that time isn't measured by us or when we feel like we want to accomplish you know, things. Oftentimes we put off things because we have time and time waits on no man. And I believe now more than ever, it is the time for us to truly live a purpose-driven and fulfilled life. Because what is the point, you know, 10, 20 years from now, you know, is look back and say, is this the life that I really wanted to live? And I cannot wait to travel after this pandemic and reach more women. Friend, I can't wait to travel. Okay, <laughs> I was on my uh, I was on my Instagram, and a girlfriend of mine, uh, she put up a post. She was just like, "I can't wait to walk down the aisle." And then when you hit the story to the next, you know, to the next slide, it was the aisle to get on the plane. I was like, "Yes, that's the type of aisle." <laughs> can't wait <laughs> to walk down too <laughs> but yeah I, I uh, I'm right there with you when it when it comes to when it comes to to traveling but yeah the pandemic caused us to really like slow down and really face some things you know I, I know this year has been really 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 rough for us you know and and I said it before you guys here on the podcast that the pandemic it didn't cause really anything new. Yes, there's a disease that's, you know, that's going around and millions of people have been affected. But when it comes to your individual situation, it didn't necessarily cause anything new. It just exacerbated the problems that were already there. If anything, it put more of a spotlight on these issues that you possibly have been avoiding for so long. And so now, you know, you've been placed in a position where you have no other choice but to to face it, 
to face the problem or the issue. And that's not something that we should, you know, shy from, shy away from. That's not something that we should like ignore. You know, we should do the work that's necessary to resolve these issues because it's it's hard to progress to the next level when you have, you know, baggage that you can let go of. We have baggage that's literally, you know, holding you back and all you have to do is just wiggle a little bit to get rid of it but you're so afraid to wiggle it and and let go right so if anything take this time this downtime that we have you know the little bit that that we do have and really work on whatever it is that you need to work on that's going to better you and who you are you know because you never know who you are to motivate and who you are to inspire. I know we talked about, you know, how, you know, we can't wait to get on a plane, you know, but what about the people that's in your household? What about your children? You can motivate them. You know, yeah. you, even if your child is hard headed, they still listening to you. They still pulling some type of motivation from you. You know, what about your spouse? You know, people that are close to you, they're pulling motivation from you as well right it doesn't have to be somebody in another country it can literally be the person that's sitting right next to you right now as you're listening or watching this podcast episode you know like do the work go through the motions I know it's going to be hard I know believe me when I tell you I know it's going to be hard but the reward is so worth it it's so worth it you're going to get through it. You're going to you're going to survive it. There has been many people who have faced their fears, who have faced their traumas and faced their issues and overcome enough people so you can know that the same will happen for you. 100%. The same will happen for you. So talk to the women who are contemplating leaving a prestigious career to do something completely different. Give them some steps to get started. I'll say know your why. It's important that you let your why guide every single thing you do because oftentimes we try to jump ahead without saying, does this align with my purpose? Is it what I'm called to be? And take the leap. I mean, there's no perfect time to start. Just take the leap and embrace change. You know, change is ongoing and it's sometimes uncomfortable and knowing that it will take you time to get there. Find a mentor or a trusted advisor, someone who's already done the process. So you can also learn from their experiences as well and apply it to your life. And find accountability because accountability will help you to keep on track, you know, ensure that you follow through with the process. And it's okay to fail. I mean, I grew up in a household where, you know, failure was ridiculed and often not even allowed, but we must give ourselves some time to fail. Fail and reflect something negatively about you. It's just that the process didn't work out. And so it's to try again until you, the process becomes successful. So when you fail, do not take it personally. And yeah, see it as a, a step to move forward and not backward or stay there. Yeah, I I love that. I love that. You know, when you mentioned um, about the failure, how it wasn't, you know, allowed in, in your household, it made me think about Sarah Blakely. Do you know who Sarah Blakely is? Sarah G? Oh, Sarah Blakely. Yes, yes, Sarah Blakely. yes. So mm -hmm. you guys, Sarah Blakely, she is the one that um, created Spanx. And mm -hmm. so I heard her speak. I saw one of her speeches on YouTube. If you guys haven't listened to her speak, you should, because she's pretty funny. Like she's, she's good. She's pretty funny. And she has a, uh, her, her story, her come up story is, is really good. But anyway, during her speech, she talked about how her, her brother and her dad, you know, and her parents would sit down for dinner every day and her dad would ask them so you know what did you fail at today and I was just like what and he asked them that on purpose because failing 
to do something means that you took some form of action. If you failed at something, that means that you put forth some type of effort in order for you to fail at it. And so it was like his way of teaching his kids to always go after whatever it is that they wanted. And he normalized failure for them. So when she would, you know, go door to door selling fax machines, if I remember correctly, you know, um, it was nothing for her to, to hear the word no, right? Because her father had normalized failure. So when she was, you know, going to these different people, trying to get them to invest in her vision for Spanx, like hearing the word no, or are you crazy? It didn't deter her because her, her father made it okay for her and her brother to fail. I just thought that was just so powerful. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna steal that when I have kids and we sit out at the dinner table, I'm gonna ask them every day, so what you fail at today? <laughs> and so make true. It, yeah, and make it a make it a normal a normal thing to do because fear will like break down anybody. I don't care how strong you are, fear will break you down. It will paralyze you. But if you can just get past that fear, get past the fear of what people will say or how you look to somebody else, or what they will say about you, you would experience that fulfillment and joy that Trishana has been talking about throughout this whole conversation, right? You know, and she had to uh, fight this with, with her mom. Like, it's usually somebody close to us that has this 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 hold or, or has this this weight on us that will cause us to do something completely opposite of what it is that we want to do, right? Because we're trying to get some type of validation from them. And as we mentioned before, if you don't deal with those beliefs, it, it will leave a cause resentment, you know, with a loved one or, or as a particular thing. Mm, resentment, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, that's the last thing you want to live with is is regret <laughs> or <laughs> live with some type of of resentment. That's good. That was that was really good. But Trishana, this was amazing, friend. Thank you so much for being so <laughs> open and honest with uh, sharing your testimony. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Because I know that was that was pretty hard. And I'm pretty sure there are some other people out there who have Jamaican parents that can completely understand <laughs> <laughs> what you what you uh what you went through. Uh, but before I let you go, I just have two more questions for you. Give us a book or audible book recommendation, because I'm addicted to Audible, of a book um, that you have read or listened to that has inspired you in some way. Okay. Well, I'm an audible fan as well. The War of Art, Break Through the Blocks and Win Your Inner Creative Battles by Stephen Pressfield. I love that book because it talks about overcoming the form of resistance. And resistance is like a contagious disease that we all have. We're trying to that inner critique in our head that prevent us from actually pursuing what we call to be. And it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're an entrepreneur, writer, a movie star, actor, actress, it will literally stop you in the tracks if you listen to it. So basically it comes in and it tells it in different stories, which makes it very interesting. And yeah, kick resistance, that imposter syndrome in the butt and yeah. So, okay. so, right. tell me tell me the book one more time all right the war of art break through the blocks and win your inner creative battle by Stephen Pressfield Stephen Pressfield all right you guys I'm gonna have that in the show notes just click on the audible button in the show notes um to get that book i'm about to check that one out because no one has uh said that one yet here on the podcast oh. and you're an audible friend so that's on audible right yes it's also on audible um okay. 
Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to check that. Amazon out. Kindle, yeah. I, I have a physical copy too. Okay, I'm gonna have to check that one out for sure. Okay, one last question. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. I'm gonna give you two words. You tell me what your third word is, okay? Self-awareness, purpose, and... And joy. <laughs> I love that, joy. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, because self-awareness plus purpose definitely equals joy, you guys. Yeah. It definitely equals joy. Trishana, thank you so much, friend. This was amazing. Yeah, and thank you again for having me. 